Imagine your car as not just a mode of transport, but a dynamic power hub, capable of giving energy back to your home or the grid. It could even keep the lights on during a blackout. Welcome everyone, I'm Rosie Barnes and this is Engineering with Rosie. Today we're exploring vehicle to grid or V2G technology and how you could get it in your home today. Normally when you plug in an electric car, it takes electricity from the grid. Vehicle to grid reverses that and allows you to send charge from your car battery to supply the grid. I've been keen on V2G ever since I first heard of it. It feels to me like a two for one deal. You buy your car and you effectively get a home battery as a freebie. And on the society wide level, we roll out electric cars to clean up transport and we end up with the solutions for some of the biggest challenges of an all renewable electricity grid. The fact is that cars spend most of the time parked. A fully charged EV battery can power a house for several days. And even though a car battery sounds small compared to the whole electricity grid, together the potential is huge. If all of Australia Australia's vehicles were electric, the total storage would be vastly more than any grid scale battery like the Hornsdale Power Reserve's Tesla Big Battery. In fact, it would be over three days worth of the current electricity consumption of the national energy market and five times as large as Snowy Hydro 2.0 and with far fewer delays and cost blowouts. I've covered V2G before when I visited the Australian National University to talk about their research project realising electric vehicle to grid services. That was a couple of years ago and in that video I asked the question, but if the benefits are so big and the technology is already available to buy then why haven't we seen V2G rolled out all around the world? Well, today we're going to take a look at a few home and small business projects that show that V2G is moving beyond trials now. It's now a real world option for households and small businesses. So right now I'm sitting in an EV charging in Adelaide in South Australia, and we're going to visit some real world installations to see how B2G works and to hear the experiences of the owners. South Australia is the perfect place for this video for two reasons. First, the electricity grid has the highest proportion of variable renewables in the world at 70%, and they plan to be at 100% and even beyond that within a few years. So this is great for electric vehicles because not only are there no tailpipe emissions, but there are no emissions from power generation either. And all that variable renewables raises challenges that V2G is well placed to solve. I made a whole other video about South Australia's energy transition while I was here, so check that out here. So the second reason that South Australia is a perfect place to film a video about V2G is that it's actually the only state in Australia whose grid allows it. And in fact, there aren't many other places in the world. So we are going to go check out some real world V2G setups. But first, let's understand what V2G is and explore its siblings, V2L, vehicle to load and V2H, vehicle to home. The key to vehicle to grid is a bi-directional charger. This allows you to charge your vehicle's battery like normal, but also allows the vehicle to supply power back to the grid when it needs it. If you are able to access real time electricity market pricing, then you would in an ideal scenario, charge your car when there's surplus generation, such as in the middle of a sunny day. On a clear spring day like today here in South Australia, the electricity price is actually negative. So you're getting paid to charge your car battery. Then later this evening when the sun has set and everyone comes home to cook dinner, the price will likely spike quite high and that's when you're going to want to send power back to the grid. So as well as allowing any car owner to become an energy trader by night, you're also helping the energy transition by supporting the grid during peak demand and providing extra resilience. Now you might be wondering about V to L and V to H. Vehicle to load or V to L is a function allowing the electric vehicle to power other electric devices or loads. Think of it as a mobile power source. And then there's vehicle to home or V to H. This allows your electric vehicle to supply power directly to your home, which can be particularly useful during power outages or when energy prices are high. So let's get started. The first stop on our trip is the beautiful Barossa Valley, which is famous for its amazing Shiraz. And the winery I'm about to visit has another claim to fame, the first real V2G setup in Australia. Joseph from Ballycroft Vineyard and Cellars is going to tell us all about it. Joseph first discovered V2G on a trip to California in 2015. He knew he wanted it and recognized its potential to improve resilience for his winemaking activities during bushfires or outages from any other cause. So Joseph has solar panels, a home battery from BYD, a Nissan Leaf and a wall box bi-directional charger to power his winery operations and a couple of Tesla chargers, which he tells me by the way were installed just the day before Elon Musk arrived in town to open the Tesla big battery at the Hornsdale Power Reserve. At the time there weren't really any others around and Joe was hoping that Elon Musk would stop to charge on the way through but instead he flew from Adelaide in a helicopter and not even an electric helicopter. Lame. 
Welcome everybody to um, Ballycroft Vineyard and Cellars, which is Caltech for small farm. We have a 15 acre property and we have 10 acres of vineyard. We're actually a very small winery. We've got V2H, which is vehicle to home, as well as V2G. Uh, with our Nissan Leaf, we're able to power the house with or, and or the winery, any energy requirements, and then any extra will go back onto the grid. The reason we installed um, V2G was really basically to be self-sufficient with power. Instead of buying three really expensive stationary batteries, we purchased a Nissan Leaf, which is a 40 kilowatt battery inside the car, which we can use as a home battery. But you've got the, the dual service. It's also your car. And how much did you spend on the car and the battery? The Nissan Leaf, a 40 kilowatt Nissan Leaf, cost about $52,000. All our solar panels uh, cost about $25,000 and we get a feed-in tariff over the last eight years. Our solar has already paid off. The Wallbox Quasar V2G converter cost $11,000 with GST and about $1,500 to install it. We save about $2,000 of nighttime power a year because we use this. So essentially this is about a five to six year break even time. This is a BYD 22 kilowatt battery and it costs $20,000. We don't use uh, the Nissan Leaf every night because uh, if we happen to be going to Adelaide the next morning, first thing, we won't use it overnight. You're still connected to the grid though. Uh, and we're still connected to the grid. I would say for only two or three nights this year, we used power off the grid because it was rainy and cloudy and we had a storm over two days and we didn't quite have enough power to recharge the vehicles and, and the battery. Were there a lot of blackouts here? There's lots of wineries using lots of power and yeah, you can, the power can go out during vintage. This doesn't work when the power's off, by the way. The Wallbox Quasar 1, the Wallbox Quasar 2, the next one which is coming out with a CCS plug, that will work when the power's off. Well, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, or in this case, the proof of the V2G is in the wine tasting. After Joe and I wrapped filming, I piggybacked on a winery tour and tasting and picked up a few bottles for later, as well as the reliable and sustainable electricity supply and rainwater harvesting, which Joe cutely referred to as sky wine when he offered some to my baby for a tasting. Ballycroft also have really interesting winemaking practices, which I highly recommend you come and see for yourself next time you're in the region. So that's V2G in a small business. You can see why reliability is front of mind in this case. Plus the cost of all the equipment is a tax write-off so that effectively makes it a bit discounted. But can V2G make any sense for a single house? Would anybody want to spend thousands of dollars to set that up? In fact, I know someone who did just that. We're now going to head to suburban Adelaide to visit Jai who sent me an email after watching my previous video on V2G and telling me that he was just about to get it installed in his home. That was a few months ago and his system is up and running now. So let's go check that out. Hello, Rosie. I've been interested in vehicle to grid for a while. Um, got an electric car that's vehicle to grid compatible about two years ago. And the moment I heard this was available, decided I'd get one. We've got 10 kilowatts of solar with two inverters, a 10 kilowatt hour house battery, 50 kilowatt hours of storage for the car versus 10 for the house battery, it's quite an upgrade. Roughly $10,000 for the unit, 5,000 for the install, so 15,000 up front. How much did the house battery cost you? Uh, house battery would have been a while ago. I'm gonna guess $10,000. Uh, off the top of my head, the price has gone up to maybe 13,000. And how much did the car cost you? $54,000 second hand. I bought that one from the Good Car Co. What was the installation process like? It was mostly assembled. It was just stick it on the wall, attach it. Mm -hmm. I had to run a cable all the way to the opposite corner of the house for the, the fuse box. And then they've got ethernet wires running through the wall. It was all done in a day. Like how do you have it set up? The, the price fluctuates enough that you can definitely make money off buying during the day and selling in the evening. Even without solar, it's still worth it. Uh, what's the most you've ever made in a 24 hour period? Uh, so we've made $179. Uh, so this is when the grid connector between South Australia and Victoria was down. And do you have any sense of how much money in total you've saved, made? We are making on average $2 a day at the moment instead of paying for electricity. So we are not paying at all at the moment. Amber will generally just give you a credit on your bill that, that comes off your next one. But if you are consistently in the negative, they will pay you. Uh, and it's also stabilizing the grid. So it's driving down prices for everyone else. 
It's like, how, how was your experience been? Would you do it again? If I didn't have one of these, I'd buy it in a heartbeat, but I'm looking forward to all the features in the newer chargers. This one is definitely a, a first production model. There's quite a few bugs with it, uh, particularly the app doesn't work very well. I've had issues where I've had to keep closing and reopening the app just to get it to work. And it can't be used off grid. So if the grid goes down, your charge is off. So that's probably a major selling point and that is likely to be included in, in future versions. So thanks heaps for that, Jai. That is another cool example of V2G in the wild. And I really admire Jai's drive and perseverance to get that set up. Now, did you notice that both of the projects we've visited have used Nissan Leafs and Wallbox Quasar 1 bi-directional chargers? And long-time viewers might also recall that that was the same setup we saw at the ANU trial that I covered a couple of years ago. That's no coincidence. The Nissan Leaf is the only car in Australia that allows V2G, and the Quasar 1 is the only approved bi-directional charger so far. That charger uses the Chatamo charging protocol, which is pretty much only used by Nissan these days. But there are so many other EVs around now, and we are even starting to get an actual range of EVs available in Australia, which has not always been the case. I can plug my laptop into a car with V2L and charge that up. So why can't I plug it into my household battery or use it to power the lights in my home when the power goes out? Couldn't V2L basically become V2H pretty easily? I need to be super cautious here. While people are jerry-rigging their V2L cars towards some kind of V2H, it is not something that you should be messing around with without understanding the very large and very real safety implications, and it is not something that car manufacturers recommend you do. So kids, don't try this at home. With that warning out of the way, we're now going to meet up with Adelaide-based YouTuber Simone from Cartel TV. Simone has driven and reviewed just about every EV available in Australia, so she's the perfect person to tell us what's around in the world of V2L and take a look at one way to use that in your home as well. So can you tell me what are some of the cool EVs that you've been driving that have not V2G capability, but V2L? What's exciting is that more and more vehicles are going to be having V2L capabilities, which is awesome. So currently uh, we have quite a few models in Australia that have V2L. So uh, we've got your Hyundais and your Kias. So we've got the Ionic 5. We've got the uh, Kia EV6, the Kia Nero. We have the BYD Addo 3. You have, you know, your Genesis, your GV60. You've got your Electrified G80, your GV, Electrified GV70. These vehicles all typically have a 3.6 kilowatt output of V2L. And then you've got sort of uh, smaller V2L outputs uh, that you can see in, say, for example, your Mitsubishi Outlander FEV or plug-in high hybrid, um, which is around, I think, 2.2 kilowatt output. And not to mention your MG ZS EV. That's another um, one with 2.2 kilowatt V2L output. Mm. So yeah, it's really exciting that there's more vehicles with V2L capability coming to Australia. I think Ram just announced for next year a uh, 7 kilowatt V2L oh, really? output. What, what can you tell me about the potential to use V2L to do V2H? So with this Australian innovation called Home, um, basically it's taking V2L and converting it to V2H. So with products like Home, basically you can take the existing V2L capability of your EV and use that to power your home. So essentially creating V2H right here, right now, using your car. Basically, it's as simple as getting a qualified electrician to install the home system. And what we do is we pick the circuits that we want to provide power to. So we have three here. So in this home, we've got the study, the kitchen and the living area. And given that at the moment, typically 3.6 kilowatts is the maximum output for your V2L capabilities. Obviously, you're not going to be able to power your entire home, but you can power significant chunks of it. Uh, using the home system. So today we're using an Ionic 5, a Hyundai Ionic 5. Um, this is the vehicle to load adapter that comes with the car. Um, we've plugged it into just your typical, um, it's a caravan socket, so single phase. So we've plugged that in. We plug this in here into the adapter. We're going to plug this in. And just like that, your home becomes another accessory that your car can power. Well, two years ago, I asked, why haven't we seen V2G rolled out all around the world? And now I think we can finally say we are, or at least we can. It seems pretty clear to me that while the full V2G setups are so expensive, and if you're stuck just getting the normal solar feed-in tariff, you're not going to be doing this for economic reasons alone. It'll be reliability and a sense of self-sufficiency that entices the early adopters, I think. The ability to use your car to power your house in a power outage is very appealing, and especially since we're just heading into an El Nino now, which in Australia means we will surely have a long, hot, bushfire-filled summer ahead of us. On a day like today, with a 60 kilowatt 
hour battery, I should be able to make like five bucks charging and then maybe another 10 or 20 discharging it this evening. Multiply that by weeks or months and it would not be a totally insignificant amount. Not to mention the fact that you're helping to prevent the grid needing upgrades by shaving peaks in the demand curve. Now I hope to revisit the topic in another couple of years and I want to be saying that V2G is firmly in the mainstream now. Thanks so much to everyone who helped with this video. Joe from Ballycroft, Jai, Simone from Cartel TV, um, the experts who helped me with background information and the people that babysat my baby for me while I was trying to film. Not to mention the Engineering with Rosie Patreon team who support all this channel. A video like this is pretty time consuming and expensive to make. So if you want to see more videos like this where I'm out about and seeing systems in the wild, then you can feel free to support us at this link. Or if you have a cool engineering project you're working on, then feel free to get in touch and invite me to come and see it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.